Now, time for the roundish table on Planet America. Joining us, Tom Switzer from the United States Studies Centre at the University of Sydney and in our Melbourne studio, former Kansas State Senator Donald Betts. Welcome to you both. John, First to you, morning. Don Betts, uh, as, a, as a senator from, uh, from the Midwestern heartland, can you explain to us, act as our translator here, uh, the difference between the gun culture in the United States and here in Australia? Because uh, over the last few months, plenty of Australians have been saying, we just don't understand why America has this, this attachment to their firearms. Well, America uh, has a deep history with uh, with their guns, and in fact, uh, it started off during the Revolutionary War, where uh, America did not primarily have the funds in order to fund a uh, a full mo military. So then, a militia was started. So citizens uh, took on the role of defending their 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 land and their country, uh, and then. And that's where you hear the Minutemen, where they would, uh, if there was an attack by the British, the, the, the men would be there within a minute. Uh, so uh, it evolved to um, uh, certain rights and during the, the Civil War and, and, and so forth, where citizens felt the right to defend their land. Uh, there were court cases uh, involved, uh, which allowed uh, even uh, prompted African Americans to be able to, to to carry their arms and protect themselves. Uh, freed Af Africans or freed Negroes is, is the term uh, in, in the history books. But it evolved and even into the movie culture uh, from the Wild West to uh, urban films like Boys in the Hood and Menace to Society. And even to today, uh, we have the new uh, Die Hard 3 coming out. So Americans are very fascinated with uh, their guns and I think it would be nearly impossible uh, to, to eradicate that culture, uh, whereas in Australia, Australia is a um, a, a peaceful uh, peaceful country who you know doesn't have the the need or the desire or the or the you know can't fathom every nearly every household uh, having a, a gun mm -hmm. and uh, so in America that's that's something that we we you know we we kind of pride ourselves we have protection we have uh, something to to defend ourselves in case of uh, an attack or uh, whether it be from animals or from uh, foreign invaders. But the, the, Donald, when you talk about an attack, this is something that I always find quite confusing. One second people are talking about defending themselves in their home from attackers, which seems rational, and then they're talking about defending themselves from a tyrannical government which has nuclear weapons, and that seems less rational. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, like they seem to go from one justification to the other. What's going on there? I think it's probably, uh, there's a war going on in America, and it's the war on guns, whereas, I mean, if it's it's almost like the wild west if someone pulls their gun you better re you better be ready and have yours ready so it's not necessarily an attack primarily from foreign uh, maybe foreign countries or uh, a war uh, a country coming to invade the United States but it could possibly be uh, protection from uh, your fellow neighbor who uh, may decide to get a little trigger happy how big a part of this though Donald is is race because whether it's your neighbor or the or the the, the person you imagine might break into your house and and threaten your your family uh, a lot of people when they have that mental image they're thinking of a black man uh, well, I guess that was the, 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 the sentiment or the past, but if you notice, most of the massacres in the schools have not been black men. So now it's more uh, directed, I guess, in the political culture is the mentally ill. Uh, so uh, if you notice, the, the, uh, the, mental Ill, the mentally ill have not been the, the black man, uh, per se, but uh, the white American male who is uh, deemed mentally ill mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in a lot of these cases. So it, it has it, it has diverted from uh, history's past of being a black only or a brown only uh, fear to more of a, a, a broader uh, fear of uh, the mentally ill or someone who uh, is desperate and, and needs to break into someone's home and, and steal their, their valuables. I, I should say on that note, the NRA is quite fond of bringing up the mentally ill as saying mm. we don't need gun control, mm. we need to crack down on, on mental health services and all the rest of it. Mm. But mm. I should point out that only 4% of violent crimes, and that is robberies, murders, rapes or aggravated assaults in America, are committed by people who are mentally ill. 
else. So the irrational prejudice has moved from one group to another. <laughs> That's right. Well, Tom, I was just going to say, I, I've, I've generally been quite pessimistic about the chance of meaningful gun control because it's never going to get through Congress, in my view, mm. with all the Republicans there. Um, but, uh, but one thing that's different this time is that the, the issue just keeps on going on in the news. Just in our news before, two of the major stories were shootings that mm. a year ago would have been ignored in the news, but now they're big news because everyone's That's focusing right. on the gun issue. Like, for months now, they've been focusing like a laser on the gun issue. How long can that media attention keep up before people just get bored and moved on, do you think? Well, I, I, I do think... Uh, the, 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 oh, sorry, Don. The, the yeah. dynamics of the debate have yeah. changed uh, dramatically, I think, yeah. in the last two months since the terrible massacre in uh, Connecticut. I do yeah. think that's touched the hearts and souls of a lot of people and, yeah. and all parties. I think that opinion really varies about what will actually happen. On the one hand, you have folks like Charles Krauthammer, the distinguished neoconservative commentator, yeah. who's not immune to the idea of gun control, yeah. but his argument is that uh, unless you disarm the citizenry and you repeal the Second Amendment and confiscate all existing firearms, then there's no chance at all of having really effective gun control. The other school of and thought... That never happen. That's right. Uh, uh, but never. the other school of thought, of course, which is the Obama school of thought, if you like, is that some kind of legislation uh, that's more rigorous than the Brady Bill that was signed in uh, 1994, uh, but not as draconian as what uh, uh, some people would like, you know, when you repeal the Second Amendment, that has a decent chance of maybe getting through the legislature, particularly when a lot of Democrats uh, who have been pro-gun rights in the past are open to negotiation. So I think there is a chance that you might get some kind of reform, but you won't have the kind of far-reaching reforms that John Howard legislated here in Australia after the Port Arthur massacre in 1996. Tom, your view on this story about drones this week, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it seems on the one hand, uh, civil libertarians, the, the left, very big guns, yeah. Uh, well, and, and maybe it's got something to do with the gun culture, because about close to 90% of Americans say that they support mm. the drone program targeting militants overseas, and about 60% say, and that's OK if they're American as well. And yet there are all these concerns about the fact that this is extrajudicial killing. What are your thoughts? Well, look, it is quite intriguing. You've raised a very good point. I mean, if this were a President Bush or a President McCain or a President Romney that's escalated these drone strikes, uh, I think there'd be more outrage, uh, like there was uh, throughout much of the Bush years. Uh, and indeed, Obama, although I think in many respects he has changed the tone and emphasis of American foreign policy over the last four years, uh, the differences between his administration and, Obama, and, and Bush has been one of degree rather than kind. I mean, he's escalated the drone strikes, uh, he's failed to close down the Guantanamo detention centre, uh, he's borrowed uh, a, play, a leaf out of the, uh, the Bush playbook on the surge, nearly tripling US troops in what many people regard as a depressing and endless war in Afghanistan. Uh, one of the big differences, of course, is whereas the Bush administration placed a lot of emphasis on uh, 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 capturing and interrogating terrorists, the Obama administration uh, is more inclined to just uh, lob missiles from the, from the sky and, and kill people regardless of uh, their guilt, uh, although in most cases it's quite evident who they are. But of course this leads to a lot of collapse natural damage and, uh, and, uh, and there is a, a sense of rising anti-Americanism in many of these uh, Arab countries and Muslim countries. What's your view on that, Donald Betts? Well, there's always been a, a sentiment of anti-Americanism all, all over the world. However, uh, with in Obama's defense, uh, in President Obama's defense, he did uh, accomplish what he set out to do and that was to uh, to kill the, the, the number one terrorist mm -hmm. who inflicted the most fear in America, and that was Osama bin Laden. So the American people can sit back and look, okay, uh, President Obama got Osama, and, and that was, that's something that resonates with, with all Americans, because uh, in, in the 9-11 tragedy, you know, it was, it was damaging to every American. No one ever thought that uh, if, if, if you were told that two airplanes were going to come and, and uh, r uh, fly into the Twin Towers and, and d totally demolish the two buildings, you would, you know, before it happened, you would be looked at as... Uh, some conspiracy theorists, but it happened. Yeah. So, uh, with the drone program, uh, it's it's re it's better to be proactive than reactive. Mm -hmm. And none of us work in uh, or are privy to national security, so we don't know what information that the United States government and other governments around the world uh, we don't know the information that they have that could possibly be a proactive uh, approach to uh, disseminating something before it be becomes another 9-11. Uh, so that in that aspect uh, I believe that that is why the American people uh, 
by majority yeah. support the drone the drone program because it has worked and it's it's worked in the Obama administration and finally President Obama issued a um, an order for the FAA to to proceed and and offering drones to uh, the the the, the civilian sector. Uh, mm -hmm. Farmers will be using drones to look at their crops. Construction uh, workers and uh, builders will look at the the, the surrounding of um, surveillance for the, the land they're they'll, they'll build. It's, cert and it's also certainly an issue that's going to be around unit. for a long time. You're quite right, Donald Betts. We're out of time. Great yes, to talk definitely. to you. We're going to talk to you again soon. State Senator from Kansas, Donald Betts, with us. Tom Switzer from the U.S. Thanks, Study John. Center Thanks. as well.